Hey everybody, I'm Hamza Kramza and today we'll be checking out a very fast 16 pop scourge build using the Mongols. The Mongols have a strong Civ bonus that will enable us to get those scouts out ASAP with a lean but manageable economy. When executing this build appropriately, I believe that this can be used as a great mix-up to add to your Mongol build arsenal. All that's left is to show you how. Hope you enjoy! Now, it's no mystery that the Mongols can advance to the Feudal Age very quickly, and in fact, they're quite notorious for doing so. By using their Civ bonus of Gathering Hunt 40% faster, Mongol players are almost expected to hit you early with scouts on land maps. The question has always been, however, how early? As far as the meta goes, you'll usually see around 18 or 19 pop scout rush builds coming from Mongols on ladder, but this build will push that to the limit, and we'll be hitting our opponent at 16 pop. So before we start, I just want to give credit where it's due, and there are a few videos out there that were the inspiration for this one, and I definitely recommend you check out. The Viper has two videos with him achieving the 12 and 15 pop scout rushes, and Yupe popularizing the 18 pop scout rush build that we see, you know, almost every Mongols game on 1v1 Arabia. And Vipers seem to be a bit more trolly, but Yubei's build is definitely legit. I'd absolutely recommend you check it out, and huge shout out to him for you know inspiring this video. Also, uh, shout out to Anti Cold Hands for helping me practice this build in a 1v1 unranked lobby, and um, you know really testing the viability of all of this. With that being said, it's time to get into it. All right, so we're gonna start at standard. We're gonna build our two houses. Um, next to the town center there with our first three villagers and we're gonna grab our sheep here Pretty unfortunate spot since we didn't get them scouted immediately, but that's fine. We're gonna go and actually scout that uh, the outer edges with our sheep and Send our new villagers onto sheep as well. So uh, just another side note as to a bonus that really helps out this build uh, Just in general is the fact that your scout has extra line of sight so you can actually see from quite a ways away where your boars are and also more importantly where your deer are going to be. So we're just doing some quick scouting here, nothing too fancy, making sure that we don't have any idle time underneath the town center by you know preloading our sheep there and having them tasked over. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to send our 8th villager over to lure the boar and we want to do this with this villager instead of going to a lumber camp because we really want that early food intake. So um, we want to take advantage of our bonus for maximizing the 40% faster hunt as quickly as possible and the build kind of relies on it so that's what we're doing there. We're also going to send the 9 through 11 population onto wood and that's pretty standard to have three on wood there. Um, now I think you can kind of already tell that this build is a lot more robust than say the 16 pop Khmer build because by the end of this build and by the time we reach feudal we'll also have the barracks. Now the 16 pop Khmer build is a little bit uh, tight on wood and tight on resources in general so you kind of have to pick and choose but here with the Mongols things are a lot easier. Now you're going to want to lure deer as soon as you discover them. Um, or rather as soon as you discover all of your food sources. So what we're doing here, we're going to start pushing in that deer and we're going to use our 12th population villager to go and lure the boar. That being said, um, I think whenever your boar is around half of it being consumed, that's when you should send your villager over. So whether that's actually the 12th population or if that's just another uh, villager that's taking boar currently, um, just you know, make sure that there's no dead time of you gathering food there. So the 13th population villager is going to build the house, and then right after that there should be enough wood to build the mill, and that will be both of our dark age requirements there. We're going to be pushing in deer, and we were fortunate enough to find these pretty early, so we're doing pretty well there. Now it's very important to note that this build is impossible without actually finding your deer. Now you can still do this build uh, without your deer, but with the effect that it has on your economy, it's absolutely not worth it to go up during that period of time. And you're definitely better off going for, say, something like an 18 or a 19 population scout rush at that point. So definitely find your deer. Um, and if you can't, then just abandon the strategy, go for a standard up, and you'll be doing fine. So, you know, this isn't, this build is more contingent on you finding those resources there. 
So what we're doing now is we're researching Loom. And right after we research Loom, we can actually click up and we're going to send eight or five villagers over to the wood so that we have an eight total. Now on some maps, you'll have around four deer and you can kind of choose to push in that fourth deer. But I'd personally rather actually go and scout my opponent instead of, you know, that extra 140 food there. I know that you are getting it faster and all that, but it just doesn't seem worth it to miss out on that vital scouting information. And especially if your opponent tries to wall up pretty early. So what we're also going to do on the way up there is we're going to build our barracks at around 60% to feudal age. Here I build it just a little bit early, but that's fine. And we are moving everyone as efficiently as we can, and building up a nice little food stockpile so that we can build around uh, two scouts early and then start piling on the scouts a little bit later. Now, I wouldn't say I'm the most experienced Mongol player in the world, so my follow-up to this build is a little bit rough in this game and just in general. Um, you know, if cold hands, if you're watching this, uh, you definitely know something a little bit about that because um, I was getting rolled by my guy there. Um, but what we're going to do here uh, as we go up to Feudal Age is we're immediately going to drop that stable and then we are going to research double bit axe once we have the wood to do so. And then once we have the uh, wood for double bit axe, we'll be able to build another house there. So doing pretty well there. Now we scattered our opponent's berries. Perfect. Now, at this point, we're playing against the extreme AI, but if you're actually playing, I would recommend waiting for one more scout at least so you have two scouts, and then really start you know, eating or biting into your opponent's ego there. So we're going to send the 17 and 18 population to wood, and now that that's done, we're going to send the rest of the villagers over to food. So I would rally them onto your berries. And when you can, and around when you get around 75 wood, or you sense that your um, sheep are starting to run out, I would research horse collar. But in this case, we're actually gonna go for a lumber camp first. And we're gonna select our villagers there. Perfect. Send them over to another wood line. And that way we don't, you know, really destroy our wood line efficiency there. As if you have more than around, I'd say six or seven on one wood line, the, the bumping is really gonna hurt you. So that's definitely another bonus for this build rather than doing it with Khmer is just the fluidity of the build itself. So now we're approaching our opponent with our scouts. And like I said, I wouldn't wait for three scouts, really. I'd probably be harassing with two scouts and being super annoying with these. Um, my micro is not the best in general, so I would say that you know a more experienced player may be able to um, harass a bit better than myself. But for the sake of the build, we're just going to go over and start hitting the berries. We'll start hitting the wood and all those good things. So we're going to you know, make sure that we're not going to get population capped. As you can see, our opponent is just reaching feudal age there. And that's kind of a standard time. It's a little bit slow since it's the extreme AI. But I would say if your opponent's going for like man at arms into archers or a similar build, then it's really going to hurt. So we're going to control group our scouts. Make sure we're building all the right things here. And we have a lot on our uh, berries there. And because I sense that, or rather I see that our sheep are expired there, we're actually gonna research horse collar and start building those farms. So what we're actually aiming for here is around 18 on food. And that's only because I'm going for scouts into knights. I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend that if you are going for say, you know, uh, an archer push or something similar to send your villagers over to gold a little bit earlier or even send a few more onto wood to actually sustain that production but I kind of try to keep it as you know standard as I possibly can and what I view as standard is you know actually going for the night switch here so once our berries start getting a little crowded there we're gonna start pulling them off and building farms once we have the appropriate wood and that is a little bit of an efficiency or inefficiency rather but it's something that I was not really able to avoid in this build. If you can find a way to avoid that, that is perfect. And it will definitely help you out. But we're just going to wall up the side of here with the house and the palisade. And we're looking okay here, right? So we can start adding our next feudal building. So we can go into Scout Skirm or we can go into Scout Archer, whatever you choose there. But it's really about keeping your villager production constant here and making sure that you're really hitting your opponent. Um, one 
quick just note I would say on scout rushes in general is try to really avoid engaging with spears in general. So unless you're outnumbering them three to one or four to one or something crazy like that, it's really not worth the HP trade-off, even if you win, right? So I would say that, you know, really try to avoid them if you can. If it starts to get super annoying and it's just one spear and your opponent is being very greedy, just kill the spear and, you know, continue to harass the economy. But I would definitely say if you're following this up with skirms or if you're following this up with archers, just wait for those archers or those skirms and dig into the spears with those rather than, you know, sacrificing your scouts to counter units there. So like I said, we're just going to keep building farms there with our, you know, uh, villagers at the uh, berry, or villagers with berries. We can do a little cute trick here and flank the scout so they can't get away, spread out our people, our scouts, and pop, 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 pop. All right, all dead. Perfect. Now you can see that the extreme AI here has a pretty sizable army, and that's normal, right? If you're facing a normal opponent or a real opponent, they're definitely going to have some army there. And we don't really want to engage this army per se, but we definitely want to keep it at home. So if we recognize that this army is moving out earlier, we're going to want to shift immediately into skirms at home and uh, get our fletching. But seeing as this is extreme AI again, I'm going to be a bit greedy here. And we are just going to harass the eco, harass the eco, harass the eco. We see the archers and we back out. So we have wheelbarrow being researched, and once wheelbarrow finishes here, we're gonna be able to click up to Castle Age, and we should be in a very good spot after that. Now, another adjustment you can make on this build is if you sense that your opponent is going to go aggressive much earlier, I would absolutely start putting some uh, walls up earlier with your wood villager or even with a berry villager there. And that's just because, you know, Spending those little resources and that downtime there is a lot better than having a few dead villagers. So, you know, it's really up to your preference when you want to start walling there. But um, for here, because I have the pressure, I have the advantage, I wall a bit late. Now, we've clicked up to uh, our castle age there, and we can kind of choose what we want to go to next. We can go into fletching, we can go into, um, you know, uh, our archer push there, or we can just stay knights into camels or something strange like that. But that being said, that's the entirety of this build. I really hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you find this viable enough to actually try out on ladder. And um, if you have any type of questions or improvements that you would actually like to give to me, leave them down in the comments below, or check out the Discord in the description. But that being said, that's all for this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.